Good evening. Hey. Hope it's nice and warm and toasty where you're at. Because it's cold in <laughs> South Louisiana. That ain't normal. It ain't supposed to be cold down here. According to my electronic assistant here, it's 57 degrees outside here. And that's pretty cool for South Louisiana. That's was, really cool. Yeah. Y'all ready to worship the Lord? I bet a lot of you know this. sing them just a little bit too regimented like I was singing you know. <laughs> now this song has a lot of meaning in it that's what makes the song good yeah it's got good chords and good melody but think about what it's saying love lifted me love lifted me Love lifted me, love lifted me, 
love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Lord, we thank you for your love tonight. Lord, it's your love that we're here tonight for. Lord, your word says because you loved us first, Lord. We didn't love you first. And your love has come in and changed our hearts, God. Change us more, Father. Help us to know your love more and more and more. This next song, you probably will not know. We've sung it a few times. But it's a relatively new song. But it just talks about the supply of God for his children. And what he did for us to provide that supply. Listen closely to the words. Don't, don't try to necessarily, unless you do know it and can sing along. But just close your eyes and listen to these words and let the words sink deep into your heart. If you want to look up the words, look up Supply by New Creation Church. One thing we can't do is I don't have a license. I can't put the words on the screen because then YouTube would probably cut me off. <laughs> but if you want to look up the words, the name of the song is Supply. You took the fall for my sin. Rendered me blameless through death, bringing peace to your blood. Tore down the strongholds of fear, healing the darkness with all that's broken. May my fountain of life the wellspring that never runs dry I will dream of your love here I will lift up my hands sing of your mercies again all I have is in serve a faithful God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, that you are faithful. Supply all our needs according to your riches and glory. Because you love us, Lord, 
and you're not like the unjust judge, God. Bless you, Lord. You are faithful, God. for our sins because you know Jesus is coming wasn't just about keeping us out of hell he expressed his heart in John chapter 17 with just him and his disciples in the upper room and his desire was that the world would know how much the father loves them and that through his blood and his sacrifice we could be reconciled to the Father and know Him the way Jesus does. Right before I came in here tonight to to join Him, I keep picking at Him and I tell Him, I think you can handle it by yourself tonight. But He doesn't never, never listen to me. But anyway, I was in the living room and He was preparing the songs for the night and the Lord gave me a scripture our family's going through something right now we've got a family member that's a pastor that's fighting COVID and um, things are tough right now when you find yourself in circumstances and situations that you don't think is fair God how can you let this happen how can you let my child die? How can you let my parent die? How can you let my sister die? How can you how can you let us lose this house? How can you this? How can you that? And you start questioning him about circumstances and situations that you're going through. 
And trust me, a lot of the situations and circumstances that we face are not fun. But just remember, God is always with us. We don't ever walk through these things alone. He will never leave us. And he will never forsake us. I don't, I don't know of a scripture. Uh, I may be corrected, but I don't know of a scripture that says, I'll understand why I'm going through these things. God will tell me why. But he does say, I will never leave you. And I will never forsake you. And the scripture he gave me right before I came in here was Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. And it says, fear not. Fear not. For I am with you. Be not dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, and I will hold you up with my righteous right hand. Guys, when we go through things and we don't even have the strength to stand, that's okay. We're human. It says, I will uphold you, I will hold you up with my righteous right hand. Don't be dismayed. I had to look up that word and say exactly what does, what does dismay mean. Dismay is when something you're going through causes discouragement. It causes emotional distress. How I many of you are going through situations that can cause dismay. There's a lot of us, I'm sure, that are going through tough things. For the past several years, this nation has gone through several tough things. But God promises us in His Word, He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. We don't walk through these things alone. There's another scripture in Isaiah chapter 43 that says, When you walk through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. You may feel like the situation and circumstance is just going to overpower you. And I'm, I'm just, I, I can't. I'm not going to make it through this one. Yes, you will. Because God is going to hold you up. If you let him. Now you can fight him and run away and blame him and get mad and angry because he's not going to go against your will. But he's there with you if you allow him to wrap his arms around you, pull you up into his lap and wrap you up with his blanket of love. But it says, when you walk through the waters, I will be with you. You go through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you pass through the fire. How many, how many of you have been through things that you feel like you're, <laughs> you're walking through fire? The, but the scripture says, you will not be burned. The flames will not even be kindled against you. You won't even smell like smoke when you get on the other side. Why? For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. I've redeemed you and I've called you by my name. Child, you are mine. Does that say that we have to make things happen? Does that say that we have to hold on to God's hand? Does that say we have to do anything? I'm kind of simple minded and I think all these proclamations is what God is going to do for us. When you walk through the water, I will be with you. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. You won't even smell like smoke. The flame will not kindle upon you. Why? 
because I'm the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. I've redeemed you, and I've called you by my name. You're mine. So it's not up to us to make it through. Our responsibility is to trust and believe and know that God is fighting our battles for us. A lot of times that's easier said than done. But if you just fall back in his arms and relax and rest in him and know, because see, when you do that, you have to understand being a child of God, he fights our battles for us. But do you really, I mean, you can say the words, that's easy to say, but do you really believe it? Do you believe when there's more month at the end of your money <laughs> and you don't have money to pay your bills, you don't have money to feed your animals, you don't have money to eat on, do you really believe that he's going to come through for you? The Bible says he will. Do you believe the word? The Bible says my God will supply all of my need according to his riches in glory. And I don't think his riches ran out. I mean, y'all, the ground that they walk on are streets of gold. We think gold is precious, and they're like, it's, to us, it's like dirt. We walk on it. So I don't think his riches have run out. But do we believe it? When you're sitting there and your creditors are calling and you don't know where the next dime's going to come from, do you really believe that God is going to supply all your need? Either the Word of God is the Word of God, or it's not. When you're looking at a loved one, or you yourself are going through illnesses and battles with health. And the Bible says that he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. In Isaiah 53 it says we are healed. And in 2 Peter 2, 24, it says we were healed. So it's twice those exact words in the scripture, in the Bible, talking about you, a child of God. Do you believe it? And we all know that we have prayed for loved ones and they didn't get healed. They died early, died too soon. Left all of us broken hearted. But when they hit the kingdom of heaven to their eternal resting place, I can guarantee you they were healed. Because illness and sickness cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because that's where God lives. So yes, they were healed. Just not the way we wanted them to be. And I could go on and on and on. God's God loves us. He loves you so much. Get in the Bible and read this. It's on my tablet. Read this love story so that you will know exactly what is rightfully yours by covenant to claim and to pray and to declare and to respond. Get in it and find out scriptures that says... Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. And in Psalms 34, it talks about when you, when you desire things and you give your whole heart to Him, He will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to Him, and He'll bring it to pass. If, you, if there's things that you desire pray about them i mean there's so many scriptures that we can sink our teeth into and, and stand and 
stop letting the enemy, and I'm talking to myself, stop letting the enemy overpower us and just lay down and play dead. Because you know what? He knows scripture. And he twists them all the time. And he defeats us by those scriptures. If we don't know those scriptures, that we can counteract that. Get in the Word and find out what's yours. Because God is for us. He desires to give us good things. And by covenant, we have He's He's provided health. He's provided, He's given us provision. He's given us deliverance. He's given us comfort. Everything we need has already been provided. And now we don't even have to stand because he's holding us up with his right hand. I mean, come on, guys. Don't let the enemy steal from you anymore. Stand up and fight. But you got to find, you got to read the word to find out what the word of God says so you'll have a sword that you can fight with. No. You know, when Jesus, when he was in the wilderness, after he came out of the wilderness, after fight, uh, fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, what did the enemy do? He appeared to Jesus and he said, Jesus, command these stones to be turned into bread. He knew Jesus was hungry. After 40 days and 40 nights of not eating and drinking, I'd be hungry too. The enemy knew that. And he quoted scripture. But Jesus knew how to counteract that. And he said, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. He tempted him, I think it was three different times, with scripture that he twisted, he twisted, and he twisted. But Jesus knew because this word came from him. Jesus knew the true meaning of the scripture. And he counteracted what the enemy was doing and what he was attempting to do at Jesus' weakest point. He was tired. He was hungry. He was weak. And the enemy, the enemy thought, ah, he's tired and he's weak. I bet I can overcome him. But Jesus came back every time. It is written. Get in the Word of God. Find out what the Word of God says so that you, when he comes against you, so that you can overcome him with the word of God because the word of God is what will defeat him. The word of God is what will defeat him because that's when God fights our battles for us. But when we try to do it in our own strength, we get whipped every time. And I'm going to hush now because we're supposed to be singing. I love you guys. We're in the South, we say y'all. <laughs> when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Shall the flame be kindled upon me? Isaiah 48. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. I have redeemed thee, I have called thee. shall not be burned neither shall 
the flame be kindled upon me. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel. I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by name. say in the old hymn that you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb because the blood of Jesus paid for all of our sins and the stripes, the beating the pain he suffered covered our sicknesses and our diseases as well because he loves us so much thank you Lord In the beauty of your holiness, your face is all I see. In the glory of your majesty, about my knee, about my knee to worship you. Love, sacrifice, love, sacrifice. 
Thank you, God. Such a sacrifice. Spirit and the bright 
Oh, yeah. 
it's used so often but there's so much truth in that one verse and it's John 3 16 if you don't know any other scripture in the Bible John 3 16 says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life and I can guarantee you there's a song that everybody in this entire world knows and it goes like this Jesus loves me this I know about the love of Christ and all he's done for us. You know, everything has to revolve around him, but it, everything through him has to be done in love. Our 1 Corinthians 13 says, if it doesn't, it doesn't count for anything. If we could speak with the tongue of men and angels and have not love, it's nothing. We can prophesy all mysteries, but have not love, it's nothing.
Even if we could pray for the sick and everybody we touched was healed in God's eyes, if we didn't do it in love, it would count for nothing. Because it was all for love that he came to die for us because he wanted a family and he wanted us to come into his presence and just spend time with him we were listening to someone Sunday night that told the gospel story better than anyone I've ever heard before complete with sound effects yeah, yeah well <laughs> I'm not going to try to demonstrate that <laughs> He did a good job. But he did a good job. You see, he didn't just come to save us from hell. And yes, hell's a real place. And he didn't want anybody to go there, but it's our choice. We have to believe in him. We have to put our life in his hands and make him Lord of our life. But it's all for love that he came to reconcile us to the Father. In other words, to bring us back into relationship with the Father. And like the guy we was listening to this weekend, you know, Adam and Eve walked with God in the cool of the day. I don't know for how long. Nobody knows how much they had fellowship with the Lord before they Eight of the tree, day, week, month, we don't know. But when mankind sinned and separated us from God, and we chose to follow our own way rather than Him, we lost that contact with God. And He set forth a plan that Scripture says was created before the foundations of the world because He knew what would happen. That our love, I mean, that he could show his love through us, through his son, and restore us to fellowship with him. You see, that's his desire, fellowship. Yeah. God wants you to spend time in his presence because he loves you and he desires your fellowship. When you fall in love, you can't help but tell everybody that you come in contact with about that love. And there's so many religions out in the world. And if you go up to someone out of your excitement and you start telling them about Jesus, and the Bible says this, and the Bible says that. It's a, that's a good thing. But if they, if, they, if they do not receive that, well, I don't believe in the Bible. So it doesn't matter what the Bible says, I don't believe it. I found, I've read the Bible in places, and I've found lies in the Bible. So I don't believe it's true. Rather than arguing with them, Give your testimony. Your testimony of what Jesus, what God did in you and how he changed your heart and how he changed your life and how he has walked with you and he's given you, blessed you with things and given you things and healed your body and just the goodness of God. Tell them your testimony of what God means to you and how much He loves you and how much He's done for you. Because your testimony is one thing they cannot argue with. They can't tell you it's not true because it's your testimony. There's a scripture in the New Testament that says, and they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Because they can't dispute that. 
And if you're talking to that individual and, and you know them, they know you, as you begin to live your life in front of them, they'll see Jesus in you. They'll see Jesus in your eyes. They'll see Jesus in your actions, or they should. Live Jesus in front of them and show Jesus how much He loves them just like He loves you. God's desire is to have fellowship with His people. He is so in love with you, so in love with you, and He's so in love with the person that you're talking to as well. Love is not something that can be faked. Love is not something that can be, can be disputed. Give them your testimony. Show them love. Show them acceptance. Don't judge them. And don't tell them they're going to hell because. That's not a very effective way to win the hearts of people. It's the love of God that brings them to repentance and his mercies that draw them to their knees show them love it's not up to us to convict people that that belongs to the Lord don't do his job for him because he can do it so much better than you can hurting people hurt people but loving people will draw them in Love covers a multitude of sin. Show them the love of God and tell them what God has done for you and I guarantee you, you'll get a whole lot better reception than pointing your finger at them and telling them how bad they are, what they've done wrong. If they don't repent, they're going to hell. That's all true. But it's not our job to convict the world. That comes from, from the Lord. So I encourage you, when you're reaching out to people, share the love of God and what He's done for you and how He's changed your heart and how He's made a difference in your life. And it'll be just like honey. Honey on a, on a, a fly trap. They can't resist it. Because love and acceptance is what the world is craving. That's why they do what they do. And you can't expect the world to be anything different than the world. Everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants to be included. Everybody wants to be accepted. Show them the way to the Lord by your life and your lifestyle. Let them be the Bible that they read because a lot of times they'll never pick up a Bible and read it to find out really what the Bible says. They've been beat over the head with the book that people call the Bible. That's not the way to lead them to the love of God. It's the love of God that leads them to repentance and His mercies that draw them to their knees. So be Jesus in skin and let them see the love of God through you. And if you don't know how to do that, just love on that person as if they're your best buddy and see their hearts change it'll light your fire I promise the beauty of your holiness your face is all I see in the glory of your majesty, I bow my knee, I bow my knee to worship you. Your love sacrifice 
because of your perfect love. My fears are swept away in the tenderness of your embrace. I lift my hands, I lift my hands to worship you. Worship you. for the sacrifice that you paid <laughs> that you knew the price you knew what it would cost and even though in that moment of agony in the garden you wondered if there was another way but because you loved us so much you went through with it and you paid the price for sin once and for all through your very own blood so that none of us would never have to be separated from God again. That none of us would ever have to experience your wrath, but only your love and your mercy, Father. God, help us to know your love more and more. And let it take root in our hearts and show forth to those around us, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. And God bless you. Stay warm. <laughs> <laughs>